Welcome back to Plus Politics. Now, the senior special assistant to the president, Bala Tinubu, on public affairs, Adjurin Galali, has said more refineries in Nigeria will not reduce petrol pump prices. The presidential spokesperson asked Nigerians to disregard the myth that the, the more refineries in Nigeria would translate to cheaper fuel price. Now, a jury also re, uh, re, well recall that um, the federal government had said that Potaka refinery will be revitalized in December this year. Joining us to discuss this is Fine Face Dunamene, and uh, joining us later will be uh, Mick um, Agule. Both of them are um, experts in the oil and gas sector. Um, Fine Face is the national facilitator of product with artisanal crude oil refiners and modular refineries in the Niger Delta. So good to have you join us, Fine Face. Thank you, Mary Ann. Good evening, everyone. Nice to be here yes. once again. Fine Grace, uh, every time I have you here on the show is obviously to talk about the situation that we're facing in our oil and gas sector. It seems to be an unending crisis. In fact, it's deepening as the day go by, the days go by, I beg your pardon. Um, now, we all saw that press a briefing by Adjurin Galali, where he emphatically said, He's not saying that we should not, you know, revive the refineries, but he's saying it's not going to change anything. And so the average person is saying, so why are we clamoring for the refineries to be revived? I think uh, my brother, you know, Ajiru Ngelanle, the presidential spokesman is not correct. He is not an expert in the field. But even if you are not an expert in the field, you should be able to know that if you have allowed the fuel pump price to be dictated by the forces of demand and supply, that the moment supply exceeds demand, the price is going to drop. And the moment supply, I mean, a demand exceeds, uh, you know, supply, the price is going to drop. And when supply exceeds demand, the price is going to be moving in that direction. So if he says that uh, the more refineries will not lead to reduction in the fuel pump price, then it's not correct at all. I believe that some persons within the presidential fold would have corrected him by now. Because what are, what are we talking about here? Why is the fuel pump price high? It is high because the demand product has exceeded what is being supplied. It is high because the product is being imported and USD is being used at higher rates to import this. It is high because we do not have sufficient. If we are producing in this country, the four refineries are on board, Kaduna, Wari, and the two Portacot, then the uh, uh, Dangote refinery comes on stream. The various private modular refineries already ongoing you know, being, some being constructed, some completed across the, across the Niger Delta, they come on stream. And you have modular refineries provided for you who are involved in artisanal crude oil refining. And again, we are also proposing the one we call the Presidential Artisanal Crude Oil Refining Development Initiative, PACODI, that legalizes artisanal refineries. If all these, you know, industries are producing, you will have as much PMS as much AGO, as much DPK in the country, as much as you have uh, bottled water. It's going to be as common as that. So the moment you have this product flushing everywhere, you will see that competition will be introduced. And that competition is going to lead to the process of the price of the product crashing. It will crash to the extent that we may go back to even having this product sold beyond uh, below 350 naira per liter. So it is very clear. Even uh, the blind can even see and the deaf can even hear that when you say that we are producing from every corner of the country, that this is going to drop. Remember, even the Dangote refinery promised to produce the quantity that the country will use and even have about 250, you know, uh, uh, barrels or there about. Mm. Yeah, for, for export. So if we have all these things on board, it's going to crash the price of the product. Remember that now, as we speak, there is the glamour and new information across the country that the price may in increase again from what we currently have. What is the reason why this is being given? The reason is because the Naira dollar relationship are not very cordial. They are buying a you know, dollar at a higher rate. For that reason, it's also going to reflect on the cost of the product. So you can imagine that this production was being done in the country. We are buying, crude, people are buying crude oil in Naira. People are selling the refined product in Naira. Nobody has to go for dollar. You will see that our value, the value of the currency, we also appreciate. And we are going to have the product for everybody to use at the cheaper rate. It's interesting. Again, I'm going back to Ajuri's um, press uh, conference uh, or media uh, parley. Uh, 
I'm, I'm thinking to myself, um, why exactly would a presidential spokesperson come up with that particular line um, without doing his um, homework? Again, if you if you say that he's wrong, um, could this also be a tactic to dissuade our minds just in case the refineries are not up and working uh, as of when they should be or as of the time that the government has promised us? Now, Dan Getty Refinery had told us July, at least the end of July. We're in the middle of August. Nothing's yet to come off it. Um, is this a, a game of ping pong for the government and, of course, us? To a very large extent, I think he misrepresented the government of his principal. He misrepresented the governments of uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu by saying that the coming on stream of the refineries will not reduce price. Because already he has also used his own mouth to say that there is no, not going to be any increase, increase in the fuel pump price again from what we currently have. And that is not also correct, that there is not going to be increase. Because the moment we exhaust what we have currently imported into the country, there is the tendency that we are going to import more product. And if you are going back to the market to buy the product and bring it into the country, and by the time you get to the market, because of the dollar exchange rate you have used to, the, what you have used to buy the dollar, and you are bought at a higher price to back to the country, you have to recover how much you have added. That means that government cannot even be able to control how much the price is going to be the moment the marketers go back to import this product into the market. But if he is telling us that Mr. President is not also going to ensure that uh, allow fuel pump price to increase again, then, in a way, I will say that the government is in-house discussing and planning to introduce subsidy from the back door. They are trying to introduce first subsidy from the back door. Because now, if currently we have the dollar exchanging about 710 naira, for instance, to a dollar, and marketers yeah. have told you that if they go back to the they go back to the market with the current price and it's going to increase to about 750 naira or 720 naira per liter of fuel. Maybe government is trying to look at that difference that is on it. You know, our current pump price now is uh, 617 naira. And when they go back to the market and maybe like 20 naira comes on board again, then government may secret secretly through the back door pay that 20 naira for every Nigeria so that the impact is not already felt. Because since Mr. President came into office and he made that statement on his inaugural day that fuel subsidy is gone, a lot of things have happened that if not that Nigerians are docile, a lot of Nigerians are kind of uh, averse to actions of protest. The country would have been shut down today and it would have been difficult for him to even be able to rule the country because already we know what happened in 2012 during the fuel subsidy removal or even increment in fuel pump price, whereby we have the occupied Nigeria. So I think that uh, mm. the presidential spokesman didn't do his homework very, very well because even someone that is not knowledgeable in the oil and gas sector we let him know that if we have more production locally being produced, that the price is going to drop. Even as we have the official price today pegged at 617 naira per liter, you still go to some filling stations, you could buy 685 naira, 500, uh, 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 you can buy 585 naira, you can buy 591 naira, you can buy 590 naira. So the price is not still stable. The reason why mm. you have this instability in price, despite the official price at 617 naira, is because there is competition and people want to say, I am currently carrying out a research on the impact of poor subsidy on people consumption style, their lifestyle, and what is happening in River State and parts of Niger Delta. So I understand mm. how filling station uh, for attendants and managers have told me that we normally say between 4,000 and 5,000 liters of fuel per day. But since subsidy was removed and the price skyrocketed, that we are now struggling to sell between 800 liters and 1,200 liters per day. Consumption has dropped. If you check on the streets of Abuja today, the streets of Lagos, a lot of people have packed their vehicles. They can no longer run it. You can see traffic is reducing on the road. People are selling. Others are converting their vehicle into boats, you know, and other transport means so that they, they are not beginning to pay transport. If you even look around you every morning, you will see people trekking in what I can call a trekker town. Maybe they are trying to get some certification from Guinness Book of Records as a result <laughs> of a reduction in the fuel, uh, 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 in reduction in the consumption rate because of the high mm. price. So if we have production going on from these various areas, four refineries are on, modular refineries are running, artisanal refineries are being uh, legalized and they are refining, 
and you have modular refinery for artisanal refiners in parts of the Niger Delta and parts of Nigeria, you are going to see a drastic drop in the fuel pump price of the PMF to the extent that we are going to buy it below 350 Naira. And DPK, which is not available today, is also going to be available. The only source of DPK to the average household in Nigeria today is the artisanal refinery sources that is currently being bombarded by men of, of the Operation Death, Data Safe, you know, with the Nigerian Air Force and fighter jet they are using to bomb that. So it's, uh, it's mm. clear that if we produce more, the price is going to drop. Um, Sideways, we always hear persons from President Jonathan to former President um, um, Buhari and now President Tinubu talking about a, a tiny group of elites um, who are, you know, somewhat in charge of this subsidy. You know, they made it look like well, the moment we take out subsidy, all our problems will be gone. But then, of course, it is the beginning of all our problems. So, again, it makes me really wonder... Um, looking again at the fact that there's a Heineken Lokobri and then, of course, uh, the other guy um, running the oil and gas sector, um, do we e really ever see or will we ever see an end to the corruption in the oil and gas sector, accountability on one hand, and, of course, fighting down this group or this cabal? The corruption in the oil sector, unfortunately, is not going to end we can only be able to reduce it. And the percentage of reduction, at the best we can go, we only go about 20% reduction. Because Nigeria is a country that its major foreign exchange earner is the good oil, it's oil. And as a result of that, every focus is on the products, crude oil. You can also see how, instead of the Central Bank of Nigeria, trying to bring up policy that we bring about the stronger Naira. Uh, and the NMPCL is coming forward to say we are exchanging crude for $3 billion to stabilize our Naira. That is a, foreign, a CBN policy, not a private uh, public, public, private companies and policy. But then the point here remains that the corruption in the oil and gas sector is going to be there. We can only reduce it at best, just like we have been able to collectively reduce Acts of crude oil thefts in parts of the Niger Delta today through the Tantita, you know, you know, private security contracts, Operation Delta Safe, NSCDC, Nigerian Army, and all efforts being on ground. We have been able to reduce artisanal refinery to an extent, but it's still going to continue. So the tiny few that are making so much money from this subsidy have only so far been able to, you know, cut down on the amount they make because subsidy had been removed. If you also watch, you will see that. They are now announcing that we are consuming less than 45 million, you know, uh, 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 liters of PMS per day. Unlike before, when there was subsidy that they tell us that we consume over 60 million per day. So you can see that. Is, but how is also certain that that figure that we're being given is authentic? Because over the years, we've not been able to tell how much we consume a day in this country. The, re the, the reason why we were unable to tell how many... Uh, the quantity we consume per day in the country before was because subsidy was involved. And they have to lie to collect the money from government. But now everything is natural. The forces of demand and supply is now there. The market forces is operating. The independent marketers, major marketers, and all of them are importing and they are selling according to what they, how much they bought it and how much they have added as their gain. So you can now see a kind of, quote and a kind of level playing ground in terms of what people are really buying and what people are actually selling. That is why you are seeing a relative good you know, figure that can be worked with today. If subsidy is reintroduced today, you will see that they will tell us again that people are now consuming higher. I know quite well that the increments and the hike in the fuel pump price has also reduced the consumption rates of the petroleum and PMS, which also contributes to the drop in the number of uh, you know, liters we consume per day. But then the point remains that in as much as the forces of demand is in operation. We are likely going to see how much and what we get. If we really also want to know how many uh, liters we consume per day in this country, there could be a policy that we make the various filling stations to have a computerized system where each time they bring product into their, 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 their filling station, they key in the quantity of product they have brought in. And at the end of the day, what they have sold out also reflects. And there could be a system 
with the uh, with the NMPC or the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, where you have a list of all the marketers, all the filling stations, the quantity they have, what they have sold, what is remaining, will be reflecting on the system. It's a pos it's a possible thing to do to have that network, so that you can actually see what we had yesterday, what has been sold, what is remaining, and what we need going forward. Mm. That is not something that is a rocket science that they cannot do. But it's because we mm. have not really introduced technology into our oil and gas sector. It gives us the problem of trying to really be able to know what we are consuming because we are not producing. So I think if okay. we can be able to put some of these measures together, it will help us to know where we are and where we are going to as a country. Well, I, I want to thank you for coming on the show, but it would be really interesting if we can have this conversation again, because we really need to look at the corruption in the oil and gas sector. I mean, with the cases of Professor Ponde and several other issues, the NNPC has been christened and rechristened over and over again. We still aren't seeing them doing their job as a private company, but they still are tracing as if they're the ones who are setting the market prices, et cetera, et cetera. So many questions that need to be answered, but fine face. I want to say thank you for coming. Fanface Dunamene is the national facilitator um, project with artisanal crude oil refiners for modular refiners in the Niger Delta. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. It's an opportunity. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for watching the show tonight. Thank you for being part of the conversation. Don't forget, you can also um, follow our conversations, previous um, episodes on YouTube, Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Mary Anacle. Enjoy the rest of our programs. <laughs>